Hello and welcome to the Profit Roadmap. This is the premiered podcast for your field service industry needs. And today we are reporting from our Service Edge Conference, our annual conference, and I have special co-host with me standing in Brian Baird. Please welcome on. Thank you again, Becca. This is exciting. Obviously, Service Edge is always a great time. It's great to connect with members. Uh, it's great yeah. to connect with um, new friends, old friends, and uh, it's also great to have uh, all of that wrapped into one. In vendors, too. We've got a great <laughs> guest Absolutely. lined up for the next few minutes here, and uh, I'm sitting with, of course, you, Becca, and none other than uh, Tony Ricketts of Longline Marketing. Tony. Nice. Hey, how are you doing? Thanks for having me on, guys. So, Tony, uh, it's so great. I'm so glad to see you again, and it's so great to have you back uh, here at Service Edge. Uh, and, uh, you know, you've, you've done such an amazing job with your business, and and the, what, the value that you've brought to our members has just been second to none. For those people who may not be familiar, I don't know where what rock they're living under, but for those people that are not familiar with what online marketing does, why don't you give us a quick uh, little rundown? Absolutely. So one thing that we do is we focus strictly on lawn and landscape companies and offer marketing services to them. One thing that's unique about us is that we offer all-inclusive marketing services, which means that we don't we don't piecemeal individual things out, right? Because when it comes to marketing, there's no smoking gun that makes things work. It's a combination of all things working together. So we offer our services in an all-inclusive program where we offer websites, SEO, paid advertising, like Google ads, Facebook ads, social media management, uh, upselling is a big focus of ours. So email marketing and SMS marketing to your current customer base, things like that. Again, all exclusively to lawn and landscape companies so that we know what works best with them and we can build a repeatable solution that consistently gets results. Why this space? Why did you, why, what was it about the green industry specifically that really attracted you? Yeah, so green industry, lawn and landscape is not the sexiest space in the world that most people go after when they first start this. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of reasons that I chose it. Uh, one of the first reasons that I had some familiarity with it. When I was in college, I actually worked on a landscape crew. So I did softscape installations. I did landscape maintenance and things like that. Uh, so I, I, I did that for about two years. So I knew a little bit about the industry. But when it came to the marketing side, there were a couple of quick things that I looked at that was going to be important for choosing that niche. The first one was I wanted to choose a niche that I could focus on that would bring results quickly. So when it comes to like lawn and landscape, you can generate a lead and then be getting revenue from that customer very quickly. Whereas in other niches, think like say real estate, for example, you may generate a lead for a realtor, but it could be six months, a year before they ever see any money come from that investment that they've made. So Lawn and Landscape offered the avenue for us to, to bring a quick result. Um, another reason we chose them is because there wasn't a lot of competition in the space when we first started. Not very many people were going after Lawn and Landscape. Now there's quite a bit of competition out there, but when we first started, we were pretty much the only ones that were really doing it. Now that's after nine years spent as a generalist agency though. So before Longline started in 2016, I ran a generalist marketing agency for nine years, which means we did marketing for any kind of industry out there. And it was relearning those businesses over and over and over, realizing that that was not a scalable process that decided I needed to actually choose a niche and focus on that one niche. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine starting from scratch, not, not every single year, but every single deal and opportunity was starting from scratch and learning how a business or an industry ticked, and that's just got to be challenging. So, well, well, for our members, I can uh, I know I'll speak for them, I and mean, we're grateful that you did choose this space and found it. So, you know, I guess the one thing we could talk about here is, I mean, again, like you said, there's there's no smoking gun. It's like there's there's it's a moving target constantly. How do you keep up with all the trends in order to keep your clients, our members, uh, so relevant? in the space. Absolutely. So yes. there are ch trends that are changing all the time. There's new platforms that are coming in all the time. And, and analyzing the data is really where it comes down to, right? That's what my presentation today is actually going to be on. So I'm going to be doing a session on stage here at SEC here at one o'clock. And I'm going to be talking about the basically the state of the union when it comes to the data. How many people are looking for the services? What are the average cost per leads? What are the average conversion rates that we're seeing? Uh, so analyzing that data can give you a roadmap of where you need to focus going forward. So to give you guys a little quick sneak peek, one of the things that we saw skyrocket this year was traditional Google ad costs. So Google ads costs, while they still generate good leads, the cost per lead has gone up significantly. Whereas other platforms like Google's local service ads has still remained 
it has gone up some, but not nearly like some of the other platforms have. So analyzing that data can tell you that you need to shift more of your marketing dollars to this platform versus that platform. Also, when new platforms come out, so like, for example, TikTok is a new one that's up and coming yes. right now. <laughs> uh, Nextdoor has released some advertising platforms for local companies to be able to utilize. So what we do is we use our elite companies, which are our biggest clients that have big marketing budgets, and we use them to test. We let them know that, hey, we're beta testing this. We don't have proven systems that is going to work on TikTok or that's going to work on Nextdoor. But because your marketing budget is so large, let's take a shot at it and see if it works. See, when we test these new platforms and new trends and ideas, um, they're either going to be a home run or a flop in almost every case. So when it's a home run, we want to dial in on that and see how exactly how we made that result happen and how we can turn that into a repeatable process for other clients. Once we figure that out, then we'll implement it into our regular platforms and make it available to everybody. But new platforms like Nextdoor and TikTok, for example, they don't have their audience targeting down. So that was one of the biggest problems with Facebook in the first several years when they did advertising is the audience you were advertising to wasn't real targeted on your ideal customer. Now Facebook has gotten better than that and that comes with time. And with these new platforms like Nextdoor and TikTok, they just haven't gotten there yet. So that's why you'll see some clients that have a home run with Nextdoor and others have a complete strike. Wow. So is it important, so we mentioned trends, like is it, is it important to follow trends or is it, are there instances where like, you know what, we shouldn't follow trends? You know, well, I'll, I'll tell you what our, our company slogan is. Our company slogan is that we don't follow marketing trends, we define them. So like that. that stays on top of the data. And we watch for the trends in the data because the data is everything, right? People use data in their everyday lives to make decisions every day. Every decision you make in your life is typically based on some kind of data. And your marketing should be no different than that, right? Like when you go to buy a car, you look at data points in this car. We look at price point, we look at features, we look at colors, we look at whatever, and then we make our decision based on those data points and what we like. Your marketing is no different. You need to do the research, get the data points, figure out what is going to lead you to your goal, and then execute on that. And that's basically what we do with online marketing. Is you tell us your goal, and we fill in the rest of it. Well, I was watching this. What you're talking about as far as data, um, that's a pretty important job. Like, so you do you take that out of the hands of like these lawn care landscape companies that are busy doing their day to day. You, you can look at that data. You can look at the trends and the numbers and the stats. Absolutely, yeah. right? Because our clients, they're, they're lawn care business owners and landscape business owners, right? Yeah. They're not they're not data analysis experts, right? They're, they're not marketing experts. They're not programmers. They're not any of these things. So that's what we do, right? You know, when I need my taxes done, I hire my, my CPA in that firm to handle it for me because I'm not an expert there. <laughs> So when it comes to looking at the trends in the data, we have our system set up so our clients can get in there and see all of their own data yes. and, and see what's trending for their particular accounts. But we don't expect them to act on it. That's just for them to have transparency for what we're doing. But my team is the one that's analyzing that data and determining how we need to make changes in their marketing strategies to ensure that we're going in the right direction. Can you use data to predict what someone may do, what uh, like customers may do as far as like future purchases or future like, things? Okay. There's yeah. lots of data behind that. Like So for example, some of the things that I can give you is a lot of people will upsell things like mosquito control, right? People who buy fertilization and weed control services are far more likely to buy mosquito control than somebody who just buys lawn mowing services. Same thing goes for aeration over seeding. That's a huge upsell service, a very profitable service. And those fur and weed customers or other chemical customers are going to be ones that typically buy those services compared to people who are looking for the bare minimum mowing services, right? The mobile and no type of thing. So somebody that's brand new to the industry and just doing their first upsells wouldn't really know that. But partnering with a company like us where we send out over 100,000 of them a month, we can we, we record all of that data and we start seeing trends in the data as we're sending it off. So when we look back across the year where we have a million plus uh, upsell marketing emails or SMSs that have gone out, we can look and identify data points that shows that these particular customers are more likely to convert for these particular services. What about the uh, the naysayers out there? The guy, list, the, the guy or gal out there listening, they have a small business. They haven't dedicated any money to marketing. They don't even know what marketing is, and they're sitting here and they're listening to this. Or maybe they've checked out your services, and they're like, why should I invest in this? I have, I, I, I'm all about word of mouth. I'm sure that's a buzzword in your business right. that you just love. Door to door. Word yeah. 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 We hear it all the time. Word of mouth is the best advertising there is, yeah. right? The problem is word of mouth will only take you so far. 
right? Most of the companies we work with, they start working with us at a million dollars, but we work with them up to about the $30 million range. And you will never, you might be able to get to three to maybe even five million off of word of mouth, but you will never get to eight figures off of just word of mouth alone. So if you want to get to that eight figure level, you're going to have to invest in marketing, right? And it's not in our services and marketing is not made for everybody, right? Marketing is designed for companies who want to grow. There's a lot of people out there, business owners who like the slow, steady race, right? They don't want to grow like crazy because growth comes with its own set of problems, right? It's labor, it's the operational side of it, the systems, the equipment, the investments. It, it costs a lot of money to grow and it's hard to grow. So not everybody wants to do that. So if you're not in a position where you want to go from two to four million dollars in a year, then hiring a marketing agency is probably not going to be one of the first things you should do, right? Sticking with your word of mouth and going, growing uh, nice and slowly is going to be a much better approach than hiring a marketing agency where our whole intent is to deliver more business and more customers to you. And our average client, which I'll actually be going over this in the presentation today, is generating around 200 leads a month on average across the entire year. So when you're looking at that volume of leads, you've got to be able to absorb that growth and actually want that growth. Otherwise, you'll pull your hair out and your business can actually fail by growing too quickly. We've seen that happen. So. I think that's a very, very delicate, delicate topic that a lot of people don't touch on. Because I think, you know, there are people who are like, grow, 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 grow. Yeah. And there are people like, no, 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 no. Right. But I think the, the risk of growing too fast is something that does not get discussed. And, and, and you're obviously take a very consultative approach. You have a line in the sand, like you said, you work with a certain set of business criteria and everything. So I'm sure you reject a lot of business. 70 to 80%. Wow. That come into us, about 70 to 80% of the leads that come to us as landscape companies want to do marketing, get rejected because they don't qualify for one reason or another. See, besides just revenue, we also look at a couple of other things because we can't just be successful for anybody. One we would look at is the revenue to make sure they can afford us. Another thing that we're going to look at is their location, though. There's got to be enough fish in the pond to go fishing for, right? If you live in a small rural area, then it may be impossible for us to get an ROI for you. So that's another thing we're going to look at. We're also going to look at your people because we have to make sure that you have the ability to absorb the growth. Whenever we talk to somebody, they may be at a million dollars, but if the owner is still answering the phone and out in the truck, then they're not going to be a great fit for us. You know, I always say to those types of people, what are you going to do in the spring rush? Let's say when we're delivering four or 500 leads a month in the spring rush, and you're the only guy answering the phone. Right. Like, how are you going to handle that? You realize that's 20 to 30 phone calls a day, every day that you're going to have to handle. Like, you need a, a team of people in the office to be able to handle these leads. And especially if you're a long care company, if you don't answer your phone right away, they're just going right to the next person on the internet, right? You just paid money for that lead and you lost them because you didn't answer your phone right away. So people is the third thing that we qualify them on. The fourth thing that we qualify them on is services. So, and that's just making sure they're a lot of real estate company and if they're not like a roofing company or something coming to us. Okay. Do you also look at like any other internal organization? Are they using a software? Are they using pen and paper? Or is that, does that really not factor in as much? We, we don't see much of that at this level. We do okay. ask what CRMs they use. Okay. So like we hear like Service Autopilot all the time. Most of our clients that we have, a big portion of them are here on Service Autopilot. If they're not using any system, that's definitely a red flag. I don't think that we've ever turned anybody away from it because I don't think at a million dollars we've ever had anybody that's not moved to a CRM system <laughs> right. at that point. <laughs> If you're still on pad and paper, then marketing yeah. is the last thing you need to be right. thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be surprised some of the businesses that I've run into, and they're where they're at. And, I'm, and I, I, I distinctly remember this business owner who rent 16 trucks, and I was like, well, what system are you using? He's like, oh, pen and paper. And wow. I was like, wow. Oh, wow. And, and I started laughing, and he got offended. Oh, wow. He got offended. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. Don't misunderstand me. Yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah. Right. You have yes, to understand. I am genuinely impressed right. here. Uh, so let's talk about that problem. <laughs> so, uh, so, which I'm sure you've had conversations like that too, Tony. What, when you say that you work with CRMs, like Service Autopilot or anything, like how does that factor in uh, into some of the systems and processes you uh, you coordinate with your clients? Absolutely. That's a, that's a great question, a great point. It's one thing, if you are going to be doing marketing, you need to understand how the CRM can integrate with your marketing marketing agency. Again, going back to the data, data is everything. Service Autopilot is actually my favorite CRM software out of all of them out there because oh, of thank the you. integrations. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> well, one of the things that I like about it is, one, we can feed the data directly into Service Autopilot. So as somebody fills out a quote form on the website, 
they don't have to re-enter that data manually into your systems, right? It's already going to be in there. It's going to fire off automation. And it's going to handle all that stuff up for them. But more importantly, we can get that data back out of there. Right. So here's one of the things that I'm actually even talking about on stage today. I'm going to give away my whole my whole talk here on the podcast. No one's hearing it but us, Tony. Okay. We're we're going to be we're going to be missing it, unfortunately. So we're getting we're getting the exactly. preview. This is nice. We're good. Well, one of the things that we're actually doing with Service Autopilot now, we just implemented to a handful of customers. Now we're going to roll it out throughout the rest of the year next is bringing the revenue per lead back out so that we can calculate the ROI. So one thing that we do is on our site, we track all of the leads that come in, where they come from, and all that type of stuff. Well, with that data, we have phone numbers, we have email addresses, but we don't have revenue associated because the revenue is a service autopilot system, not inside of ours. So what we do is we go inside a service autopilot, we set up the automated report, that's a custom analysis that we create, that's gonna pull out the list of all of the customers grouped by their uh, has their, all their phone numbers and their emails. And our service office has three phone numbers, three emails for each uh, for each client, and then we pull out the total revenue for that client. We export that data into a spreadsheet, load it into our systems, and then it cross references the phone numbers and emails from Service Autopilot with the phone numbers and emails in our systems. Once it finds a match, it attaches the revenue total from Service Autopilot to that lead in our system. And what that enables us to do is not only give you a direct ROI that says, here's how much actual revenue has been generated from our services, but more importantly, we use that internally to determine how we need to navigate their marketing. So we not only can see it on a per lead basis, but we can see it on a per platform basis. So Google Ads has generated X dollars of revenue. Facebook has generated X dollars of revenue. SEO has generated X dollars of revenue. So we know where to focus our efforts at. See, there's lots of instances where like Google, for example, may be your highest cost per lead, whereas Facebook is way less, but the actual revenue and cost per customer acquisition on Google is better because the Facebook customers don't close as high and they're not doing jobs as well. So just knowing your cost per lead isn't enough. You've got to take it over the goal line to find out which ones are actually generating money in the bank versus which ones are you just getting opportunities for. Does that make sense? Yes. I have to ask, I always have to ask this question, AI, yep. <laughs> what role, what impact, any disruptions or... As a lot of people are saying, you know, maybe AI will help us be even more, more efficient in, in the day. But as far as marketing and AI and imaging and all of that, how do, what's your take on that? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So AI is a very misunderstood technology. Yes. Um, there are limitations to it. Um, and it's not as great as everybody thinks it is. But there's a lot that you can do. It can make you very much more efficient. I would say that it would be like the equivalent of like when the farm tractor came out, right? The farm tractor by itself is going to do nothing. It's a tool for the farmer to use. And AI is a tool for people to use. AI won't replace anything in your business, but it will help you be more efficient and come up with new things. So some of the ways that we're using AI, we, now we took it a little bit further because we're a tech company and, and, and we do things like that. But uh, we went to OpenAI and we got our own uh, our own uh, our own AI bot, basically, right? And we train it with our own content so that when we use it, it's talking back to us in the way that we need it. So one of the things that we do is we write content for all of our clients, right? We, we produce around 350 content pieces a month. And what we've done is we've taken all of that content and we've loaded it into uh, OpenAI to train our own AI bot. It's like an online AI. And what we can do now is go in there, feed in all of the unique points about our client services. So like, let's say we're writing a page about fertilization. We feed in what their treatment schedules look like, what kind of uh, fertilizers are they using? Uh, what, are, what types of equipment are they using? And all the details that we've gathered about that service, we load it into there and then it'll write us a content page about say fertilization in the format and style that we write, but with all of their unique data points. And we take that then our human editors go through and edit it all, clean it all up, make sure it is 100% unique and everything looks great before we send it out and publish it. We're able to take our content production time down from about three hours per content piece down to about 30, 45 minutes. So when we're producing 350 of those a month, that enables us to be a whole lot more efficient, which is one of the reasons why we haven't had to increase our prices because we're utilizing AI to become more efficient in different places, being that our business is all labor-based. So if 
everybody knows costs are rising across the country for everything. Yes. And when we're able to be more efficient internally with our operations, that means we don't have to raise prices on the front end for our clients. So, so practicing what you preach. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Absolutely. We eat our own dog food. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that metaphor. That's awesome. Well, Tony, thank you so much for uh, taking a few minutes and sitting down with us. Uh, Thanks for it's, having me. Uh, I know your talk to, uh, your talk later today is going to be fantastic, it, um, and it, I mean I remember I remember sitting in your talk last year, and that was really really insightful into not only what you guys do, but in the what businesses should be focusing on as they're as they're in that growth mode, and that growth space, and everything, and and uh, you know it's never too soon to look into that. So you know you might have heard some of those numbers that Tony heard throughout. Maybe you're not there yet, but that doesn't mean you can't be, and it's. You know, taking advantage of opportunities, and then when you do get to that level, check out Tony because he's obviously taking people to the to the next level beyond that. Always keep thinking about that next level. Absolutely. I mean, even companies like John Potashnik City Turf started with one client, right, and, and grew from there. Every company started from the ground and grows from there. So if you're not there yet, you can absolutely get there. But it's if you want to get there, right? That's the key. Some people don't want to, some people do. So if you do want to get there, get to that mid to high seven figures into the eight figures and give us a call and where can we in your website absolutely you can reach us at our website it's just online dot marketing an exact domain name to, uh, to our company name uh, you can go on all the social media you can give us a call 813-944-3400 we guarantee we answer the phone between monday through friday 9 a.m to 5 p.m during business hours every phone call gets answered so if you want to learn more about us you just give us a call go to our website we'll be happy to talk with you guys Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And to all of our Profit Roadmap listeners, Teddy Bear, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. If you want to hear more and catch this episode, you can stream it on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and more. If you want to read our show notes, you can find that at serviceautopilot.com forward slash podcast. And as usual, if you have questions or guest recommendations or you want to be on the podcast with us, email us at Profit Roadmap at exploretechnologies.com. That is spelled X-P-L-O-R. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you all next time. Thanks, Toby. Yep. Bye-bye.